today uh we're at lifetime and uh gym was empty man so i was super excited to get a workout in uh today i wanted to work on extending my range so it's a sequence that i go through i love to uh focus on just really getting my forearm extremely extremely tired my my shoulders forearm and my wrist uh, a lot of times people use their whole arm to shoot their whole body everything to shoot which leads to being very inconsistent you know you, you can't really control all of those things to go right all the time so my focus constantly is to work on simplifying my shot make it as simple as possible so what I like to do is warm up with just getting my wrist started. As you can see, I'm trying to just get it as high as possible. But, but my shot in general is just the flick of the wrist. There's really nothing else to it. As long as I get the ball above my head, that's technically where my pocket is. So if I get to this spot above my head, I can start off the dribble. I can start off of a rip. I can plant sideways, facing left, right, doesn't matter. As long as I get to that pocket above my head, it's just a flick of the wrist. So uh, being able to do that is very important, but you also have to be very strong in your wrist. Otherwise, it's going to be like a chuck. You won't be very consistent that way either. So in order to extend the range, this is the drills that I like to go through. Start off slow, just warming up, uh, get the wrist nice and tired, and then uh, I'm going to scoot under the basket and go about, I don't know, I, typically I do around 100. I keep my hands up. I want to keep them as straight as possible so I can really get it tired, really get that burn. And I'm just working on that wrist, constantly flicking the wrist, nice and tired. So then what we're going to do is we're going to start under and we're just going to keep moving our way back. And by the time we're shooting a three-pointer, an NBA three-pointer, uh, our wrist, arms, shoulders, it's going to be on fire. It's going to be absolutely burning. So being able to keep your uh, correct form and you're not chucking while your arms are tired is going to develop that muscle memory. So when you are running, when you are playing in the game and everything, it just comes down to getting in that pocket, a nice flick of the wrist. And really the, the idea behind how I'm thinking is how I'm shooting underneath that basket where it's just a flick of the wrist. I hold the ball above my head. Look at the wrist, it goes right in the basket. If I can shoot at the three-point line with the same effort that I shoot underneath the basket, for sure I'd be shooting a really, really high percentage. Uh, but a lot of people, what I see is they shoot one way underneath the basket, and by the time they end up to the three-point line, they shoot totally different because they're not strong enough. And so that's technically where range comes from. You're just not strong enough to shoot from out there. So. This is what this is going to help you with. It's going to help you get stronger in your wrist so you can be more consistent. What I like to do is start, do like 100 underneath the basket, and then I'm going to keep scooting back. So I'm going to shoot around 10, around the mid-range, because it's not really pushing it. That's kind of just a flick as well. And then I'm going to go to the college, which is like a pull-up jumper. And then I'm going to move back to the NBA, which is a, a pretty good shot. you got to put a little into it. But uh, this is definitely what's going to help me extend my range. And, and the goal is to make, I, I typically like to go 20 in a row or 15 in a row. And I, I try to do it twice. So when I get to the college line, say I go 15 out of 15. So I'm good. I, I cleared that line. I can move to the NBA line, but I'm going to go one more time to see if I can beat it um, and just see how many I can go. Uh, a lot of times, it's just mental. It's just mental. You'll see uh, when I'm shooting the college three-point line, there was a guy that came and he was watching and he was looking in the, um, in the doors. It just goes to show, man, so much of this game is mental. <laughs> when I'm sitting there and I'm going for a target and I'm going for a goal, it's like 20 in a row, 10 in a row, whatever. When I'm going for that, you, you constantly start thinking, especially when you get around eight, nine, you know, it's just natural to kind of maybe tense up a little bit, and that's important not to do. So, uh, But it's funny because when the guy was standing in the door, I no longer was thinking about the numbers. What came in my mind was like, all right, you're going to watch me shoot. You're going to be watching all day because I'm not going to miss. That, that's what went through my mind. But then I went ahead and rattled off six or seven more just because I was focused more on 
uh, you know, like trying to prove this guy wrong <laughs> instead of actually focusing on the actual numbers. So it's good to trick yourself sometimes. That's why I like being like the gym being alone. I like not having rebounders. Being able to spend time by yourself and work on your game is huge, not only for like the physical progression, the skill progression, but also the mental progression. The little tricks that you do with yourself or whatever is definitely gonna help you in the game like situations. Because well, a lot of things are gonna go not how you planned in the game. So if you practice these little things mentally in practice, you'll be able to dominate the games when those things arise. Another thing that I like to do is when I, I go back to the three-point line, I don't always change the same way. I don't wanna like always turn over my right shoulder. I wanna go over my left, I wanna go over my right. I wanna get uh, both, both sides kind of an equal amount. Um, Another thing that I also don't like and I want to stay away from is uh, I don't want to get in too much of a rhythm. So, like, one thing I don't like about having a rebounder is when he passes it to me, uh, I can catch and shoot, and I can almost get in a rhythm to the point where I don't, I don't even feel it no more. I mean, I, can, I literally will rattle off 25, 30 in a row before I miss because I, I have adapted to the rhythm more so than the actual shot itself. So it's good to get up reps, and that's fine, but in a game... How many times are you gonna literally shoot the same exact shot twice in a row? It's not gonna happen. So for me, I like to go get the rebound and go back because then I have to reset myself. So being able to reset and make 10, 11, 12 in a row is a lot better than just catch and shoot, catch and shoot, catch and shoot. Uh, little tricks like that is gonna help your shot a lot, especially in the long run. So yeah, see here, uh, that's why I did those dribbles. Uh, when I was talking about interrupting that rhythm, I, mean, I was getting a lot of swishes, a lot of uh, clean makes. Um, it's important to throw that rhythm off every one, once in a while and to be able to make that shot. So that's why I did a couple of dribbles, left, right, through the legs, whatever, spin move, whatever you wanna do. A little hesitation, so it's outside of that rhythm. And then can you make that shot? Because that's going to be more similar to the one that you get in the game. Not the, not the rhythm shots. Rhythm shots are good for reps. And just developing their confidence, seeing the ball go in. The shots that you're typically going to get in the game are, are equivalent to that same feeling of interrupting that rhythm and then being able to knock down that shot. So now we've made it back to the NBA line. Um, we've, we've done our progression. This is where we're gonna finish. Uh, we started underneath the basket, do about 100. Uh, went to the elbow, do around 10, 15. Uh, give yourself a target, meet your target before you move to the next one. Uh, we got the college line, go for around 20, 15, uh, whatever, whatever's kind of challenging. Uh, now we're at the NBA and shoulders are burning. Arms on fire, wrist, wrist is tired, forearms tired. And uh, that's the goal, I mean, that's the point. We wanna break down that muscle and then focus on keeping the form. Uh, this is what's gonna extend your range. Being able to keep your form while your muscles are tired is what's gonna develop the muscle memory. Uh, it'll be 10 times easier when you come back the next day or the day after, after a little bit of rest or whatever. Uh, that that three-point line is not gonna feel as far as it does today, that's for sure. Uh, so yeah, my, my goal was to reach 10. I got 10 and then I got mad because I, I missed shortly after. 
Uh, but that goes to show, man, the mental, the mental part. Like I, I, I reached my goal, and then I kind of let my guard down a little bit, <laughs> and then, and then I end up missing. Uh, Got to stay engaged. Got to stay engaged. So now, on this time around, uh, I'm gonna try to beat ten. So just to emphasize, what we're working on right now is extending the range. And uh, the goal right now is to focus on that wrist. We're trying to build up that muscle. And also while we're tired, since the shoulders are burning and the wrist is hurting and the forearms hurt, uh, this is what's gonna build that muscle memory, doing something while, while you're tired. Um, what I see a lot when people are training or when I watch people work out, uh, as soon as they get tired or as soon as it gets hard or difficult or, or they're not seeing the results right away, they tend to either go back to their, their old habits or, or they find little tricks to make the workout easier at that time. Uh, don't do that, because you're, you're only hurting yourself. Uh, if the goal is to extend the range, constantly be focused on what's gonna help that range. Uh, so again, keep that focus on the wrist. Uh, if, if the NBA line is too far, scoot in. Go right to your fence, go right to your limit, uh, and stay there. Uh, don't be ashamed to, to airball it. Don't, don't try to fix it just to get it there or just to get mates. Uh, stay, stay, stay the course. Focus right on that wrist and uh, work on that follow through. And then again, give yourself a target. And try to beat that target. So, never leave the gym on a miss. <laughs> It would have been nice to, to get to a 20-year-old, but I, I did meet my goal. My wrist is on fire. Quick little ISO. Boom. Workout's done. 